Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And this week I'm gonna show you how I decorated this awesome decayed overgrown skull dice tower for a massive game of Zombicide. You see, my mate Fabian throws this massive game every now and then where they do up the whole apartment and we all dress the part for the day. So now that he's trying to turn it into a continued legacy campaign style of game, I thought I had to help him out with a few builds. So this first one is going to be this dice tower. We had an obvious choice of skull dice tower when we jumped onto Thingiverse. So we downloaded this guy, sliced him up and printed him off in about 24 hours. Then I took him outside in a rare moment of sunshine and gave him a grey primer. And once that was dry, I came in with some fine sandpaper to try and take off some more of those print lines that were left over and not filled in by the spray paint. Some areas of the print requiring a lot more work with the sandpaper and some others coming out quite nice and smooth. And next up was to add the first layer of basing. So I went around with a heap of PVA glue over all of the base and then covered it with sand. Making sure to repeat this over everywhere that I want to look like an earthy base. Once I had this everywhere, I gave it a good soak with isopropyl alcohol before coming in with some watered down PVA glue to seal everything exactly how it is. And quickly coming in and scraping away any excess before this dries rock solid. And then we're back outside for a coat of the Fiddly Bits Grey Primer. And now at this stage, we've still got some issues with print lines, as you can see on the stones there and these ribcage sections that hold up the skull. So we're going to go over all of this with some UV resin painting it on and then hitting it with a UV torch. This stuff comes from my 3D printer, but by painting it onto models like this and allowing it to cure, it gives for a very nice, hard, flat surface and can really help to fill in all of those print lines that come from the classic PLA printer. I then sit it in the sun to make sure that all of this is cured properly before giving it another prime and then a paint with a Wraithbone White from Citadel. Due to the high humidity, this paint has these kinds of issues as it dries, leaving some cracked textures. This isn't a problem for me in this particular build, but it might be if you're painting miniatures. And now to paint the entire thing. I am using some Citadel contrast paints a lot of people would not want to use this much contrast paint for a terrain piece or a large prop like this, but I thought what the hell I wanted to make something cool. So I added it to my wet palette and watered it down quite a bit before spreading it over the entirety of the skull. Next up I made a mix of cheap acrylic brown paint and water, about one part paint and three parts water and spread this mix over all of the earth areas that I want to give a nice brown base coat to. Now I'm going to quickly use some Space Wolf Grey over all of the stone areas, even though these are probably going to disappear under the overgrowth. I love this contrast paint for stone as I think it gives that really nice natural matte finish when it dries that we don't get from a lot of other paints. I'm going to come back in now with some pure skeleton horde and darken up some of these cracks and crevices and bring the details out in the model. And now we start building up the base. We're going to put some combinations of dirts and in this case a notch scenery detritus dead leaf build up. You can kind of just take anything from the yard if you wanted for this, but I've got this on hand. Next up, we're gonna grab our first pieces of flocking and just start spreading these over anywhere that the glue is still exposed. Really just piling it on wherever you want growth. Next up, I start adding more and more glue, vining further up the build, 
so that I can have a growing moss kind of a feel. Sprinkling the rest of a newer, brighter flock combination over this, and then repeating the process over a lot more of the skull. As I went, I added in some reindeer moss, which I just glued into this back corner with a heap of PVA glue. And then continued to add more PVA glue, moss strands vining their way up the skull. The further into the build that I got, the more I realized I just wanted this thing to be completely overgrown and decayed but also providing new life, adding a nice juxtaposition between the death and the beautiful colors and growth that had been brought forth from the decay. So to do this, I just kept piling on the glue and adding different kinds of flocks, even attempting to add on some static grass, despite the angle of this really just not working with the prop in the way. So I just piled it on there, which kind of gave it its own effect anyway. Now adding some earth into anywhere I think it would get caught by the wind, like these holes for the nostril and a few sections on the teeth. It's these small details that can make something look like it's been there for a long time. Now for more overgrowth, we're going to grab some fake plants from a dollar store and in my case, a few 3D printed mushrooms that are available for free on Thingiverse. I just scaled these little guys up to 300%, printed them out, primed them my usual way, and now are giving them a paint using some contrast paints. I usually do this at a much smaller scale for my other builds, so I thought why not mix it up and bring these guys up to our life scale for this one. So first up, I'm gonna glue down these dollar store plants with a little bit of hot glue. And then busting out the Gorilla Glue Super Glue to glue down all of these mushrooms. I just said glue a lot. And now we move on to the next batch of mushrooms. The trick with these was trying to place them in areas that people aren't going to be grabbing at the skull otherwise they're just gonna fall off. So picking some of these areas tucked away to the sides and down towards the bottom are the best, as well as making sure to keep things away from where the dice are gonna be rolled. Other than that, really just going nuts with the overgrown colors and bringing as much life to this death as we possibly can. So with that in mind, let's add even more flocking and mosses to take over this skull, really coming up to anywhere that we have mushrooms and lichens growing out of it, giving them a base to have grown from. So for this layer, I'm going to use a nice bright flocking to show the topmost highlight, as well as giving it a little bit of differentiation from everything else we've got on the build so far. I like this so much that I continued it over the rest of the build, adding this bright flocking into anywhere else that the earth and dirt were showing, including that nose hole that we filled with dirt earlier on, becoming a nice new area for this moss to gather and grow from. So far, so good. But I decided it needed a little bit more life, so I printed off a little frog and some snails. I had to rip one of the mushrooms out to place the frog in the only spot that he would actually fit. So these guys got glued back down in a slightly different position that actually helped to cover up a little bit of the hot glue that held this plant down. So now that I had the placement for this guy ready, it was time to give him a bit of a paint job. I started with Militarum Green contrast paint from Citadel and a nice deep black for the eyes. Before brightening him up with a layer of the contrast yellow from Citadel, combined with the green, I quite like the end result of this. Then moving on to the tiny snails, I base these guys shell with an Agaros Dunes, 
and then gave their bodies a cover in the Space Wolves Grey. And finishing them up with a gloss varnish to give them that nice slimy shiny look of the slug body. Then deciding to add this gloss coat over the entirety of the frog as well to give him a nice wet shiny natural look. Before gluing him down into his spot and finding some places for the snails. These guys could be in some weirder spots, just remembering to keep them out of the way of the dice. And I was close to calling it done, but then I remembered how many of you guys out there are triggered by a base that doesn't have a painted edge. So I started to clean this one up with a Abaddon black edging and realized that I should do it properly. So I busted out the masking tape, taped off everywhere that I wanted to keep it away from and really got in deep onto those edges of this nice display plinth. And peeling that off was very satisfying. I think I've got to do that a bit more often. With that perfect straight edge painted in and finished nicely, it's time to move on to the hero shots. As always, I can't believe what I've managed to put together just by throwing down a heap of dirt, glue, paints, and flock. I absolutely love adding this overgrown whimsicalness to something so dark like the skull and the death. Having the two different styles combined together is really right up my alley. I think I'm gonna have to do another one of these for myself just to sit on the shelf back there. It's turned out really cool and I can't wait to have this on the table when we're all dressed up and playing the game. This was my first Zombicide build, but I have another one in progress already. A giant ruin turned into a survivor camp is perfect for this post-apocalyptic medieval fantasy world. And it's also gonna play a role in the campaign style of Zombicide that my mate's currently developing. Combining zombies and Dungeons and Dragons sounds great to me, so I think I'm gonna do a series of these videos. Remember, never stop making stuff.